This is part 57 of Angular CRUD tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss implementing CAN Activate Guard with an example. As the name implies, CAN Activate Guard determines if a route can be activated. There are several use cases for this CAN Activate Guard. For example, we can use it to check if the user is authenticated before allowing him to access protected areas of our application. If the user is not authenticated, we redirect the user to access denied component or login component. Similarly, we can also use it to check if a specific resource he is looking for exists. If the resource does not exist, we redirect him to the page not found component. If the resource exists, we redirect the user to navigate that specific resource. Now let's look at an example. At the moment, we are on the list route and when we click on any of these employee panels, we are redirected to view his details. Notice in the URL, this one right here is the ID of the employee that we want to view. There's nothing stopping the end user from typing any ID here. For example, at the moment, within our system, we don't have an employee with ID 5. Now, when I try to view an employee whose details does not exist, notice the page displays nothing. You know, we just have the shell of the page. And at this point, when we launch browser developer tools, notice we have got errors within the console. We don't want this to happen. So here is what we want to do. If the employee with the specified ID in the URL exists, then the navigation should be allowed to continue and view that specific employee details. On the other hand, if the employee does not exist, then the application should redirect the user to page not found component. So basically what we want to do is protect this details route with can activate card. At the moment, within our application, we don't have page not found component. So first, let's go ahead and create that. Our application is still running, so let's stop it first clear the screen. Now here is the command to generate a new component using Angular CLI. ng for Angular CLI itself, g for generate, c for component and let's name our component page not found. We don't want a dedicated folder for this component so I'm going to use flat option. There we go. Our component is now created. Notice Angular CLI not only created the required component files, it also has updated the root module file app.module.ts to import this new component and add it to the declarations array. So if we take a look at our project, notice we have the three component files right here and with an app.module.ts we have the required import statement and this new component is also added to the declarations array. Now let's modify the view template of this new component. So all this component is going to say is the resource you're looking for cannot be found. Let's save our changes and include a route for this new component. All our application routes are in the root module file app.module.ts. Notice our routes are right here. Let's make a copy of this route and then change the bits that are required. Let's set the path for this new route to not found. And the component is page not found component. Now let's style this h1 element. Styles are usually specified in the corresponding component CSS file. So we want to style the h1 element color to be red. Let's save all these changes and start the server. Our server is started. Now let's navigate to our new route. Notice the page doesn't display anything. Now let's launch browser developer tools and see what's going on. Notice we have an error and if we take a look at this error, it says cannot match any routes. That is because these routes are case sensitive and notice here we have an uppercase F. So let's change that to lowercase. Now let's try to navigate to not found route again. There we go. Our component is now displayed without any errors. Now if we take a look at the browser console, notice we are still logging the router navigation events. We don't want that anymore. So let's remove the corresponding code. The code to log the navigation events to the console is right here. So let's remove this enable tracing property. Now let's implement can activate guard. This guard should check if the employee with the specified ID in the URL exists. If the employee does not exist, then it should redirect the user to page not found component. If the employee exists, then it should allow the navigation to continue and view that specific employee details. So the first step here is to create a service for can activate card. Let's place the code in its own file. So to the employees folder, let's add a new file. 
I'm going to name this file employee-details-guard.service.ts. A service in Angular is nothing but a class, so let's implement the class. I'm going to name this class employee details guard service. We are implementing can activate guard. So let's make this class implement can activate interface provided by Angular. If you recollect, in part 39 of this video series, we implemented can deactivate guard. In that case, the service class implemented can deactivate interface provided by Angular. Right now, we are implementing can activate guard. So the service class implements can activate interface. This can activate interface has got one method for which our class needs to provide implementation. To get the signature of that method, let's go to the definition on this can activate interface. Notice this interface has got one method can activate. Let's copy the signature of this method and paste it within our service class. Notice this method has got two input parameters. First, let's import the types for both these parameters. For our implementation, we don't need the second parameter router state snapshot. You can delete it if you want, but I'm going to leave it here. Now, if we take a look at the return type of this method, notice it can return an observable of boolean, promise of boolean, or a simple boolean. In our case, let's return a simple boolean. So this method returns true if the route can be activated, otherwise false. In our case, we want to check if the employee with the specified ID exists. If the employee exists, then we want to return true so the route is activated. If the employee does not exist, then we want to redirect the user to page not found component and return false so the route is not activated. To check if an employee with a specified ID exists, we need employee service. So let's inject it using this class constructor. Let's name the private field underscore employee service. And the type is employee service. In addition to employee service, we also need the router service provided by Angular. This router service is required to navigate the user to page not found route if the employee with the specified ID does not exist. Now this class is a service class, so let's decorate it with at injectable decorator. So all that is left now to do is check if the employee with the specified ID exists. For that, we are going to make use of this employee service. So within our can activate method, this dot underscore employee service dot get employee. So to this method, we need to pass the ID of the employee. To get the employee ID from the URL, we can make use of this parameter right here. So let's use that parameter. So route.paramMap.get and the name of the parameter is id. Now this get method is going to return the parameter value as a string. We need to convert that to a number. To do that, we simply use a plus sign right here. Now if you look at the return type of this method, it returns an employee object. Now what we want this to do is return true if the employee exists, otherwise false. So to convert the result to boolean, we use two exclamation marks. Let's store this result in a constant. I'm going to name the constant employee exists. So if employee exists, return true to continue route activation. Else, we want to redirect the user to not found route. So we are going to use this router service for that. So let's use the router navigate method to navigate the user to not found route. And then finally, return false. Next, we need to register our guard service. Let's do that within the root module file app.module.ts. So let's include our guard service class as part of the providers array. Let's import this guard service. The final step is to tie this guard to the route that we want to guard. In our case, we want to guard the details route. Our details route is right here. Now to tie our guard, 
we use can activate property and then specify our guard service employee details guard service notice we are using can deactivate property to add can deactivate guard similarly to add can activate guard we are using can activate property now let's save our changes and take a look at the browser now let's navigate to details route and specify an employee ID that exists. We have an employee with ID 1 so our application should activate the route and display employee 1 details. There we go. Now let's specify an ID that does not exist. We do not have an employee with ID 5 so our route card should redirect us to page not found component. There we go. There are three simple steps to implement a route card in Angular. The first step is to implement the guard service class. We make the guard service class implement can activate interface because we are implementing can activate guard and then provide the implementation for the interface method can activate. If you are implementing can deactivate guard, you make your service class implement can deactivate interface and provide the implementation for that interface method which happens to be can deactivate method. The next step is to register our guard service with Angular dependency injection system. Finally, tie the guard to a route that you want to protect. In our case, we want to protect the details route. That's it in this video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.